Okay, and we're here with school board candidate Stacy Rouse. Stacy, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, do you want to just give us a little background about yourself and why you're running for school board this year? Yes, thank you so much for um, allowing me to be here today. Um, so I am a, a Malibu resident. I've lived here um, continuously. Um, 2002, um, and I've been connected to the Malibu community through um, mine and my husband's jobs at Pepperdine since 1998, but didn't live continuously in the community. Um, I have two boys. Um, they went through Malibu Pathways schools from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. I have a 2017 and a 2021 Malibu High graduate. Um, I continued to stay connected to the schools, even though my kids have graduated out. Um, I've been president of the Malibu Schools Leadership Council, which is a body in Malibu for Malibu Pathway um, people. It includes all of the PTA presidents, the Malibu Boys and Girls Club, um, the Malibu Pathway Director for the um, district, uh, advocates for Malibu Public Schools representative, um, the principals of each of the four schools. So we get together monthly just to have a good space of communication and collaboration. And I've led that since 2016 and have continued to do so. Um, I'm running for, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> my mind is uh, running faster than my mouth. Um, I wanted to run because Craig Foster is stepping down and Malibu um, is not guaranteed representation. Um, and I'll be the only person from Malibu running in this election. And even if everyone in Malibu who could vote voted for me, I would only have 15% of the vote. So, um, so we really need to have broad coalition um, to have Malibu representation on the board. And um, I have been working with people in the district through my role in Malibu Schools Leadership Council and um, on the uh, Malibu uh, FAC um, for the uh, facilities district advisory committee. So I do, I have had experience. I do know people and, um, and I, I just want to have impact and be part of this, um, system in a different way than I have been. Great. Thank you so much. So you, you sort of teed up my first question, which is, you know, you, you'll be, you're the only candidate from Malibu or, or currently in Malibu on, on the ballot. And with Craig leaving, you'll you if you win, you would be the only Malibu uh, representative on the district, on the school board. So I wanted to ask you your perspective um, based on your experience with the school district over the years about some examples that ultimately led Malibu to seek the petition to unify. What have you seen? What have you witnessed uh, that that led to this outcome? And then as a part two of that, what would you see as an equitable outcome? Like what would that look like for both Malibu and Santa Monica to be able to part ways in, on a happy basis? Yeah, um, so I think you could ask many different people what they think led up to it and you would get a lot of answers. And I do think it is really nuanced and complex. Um, I, to me, I, I don't want to simplify it and I don't want to speak for everyone, but for me, what I see is it really comes down to proximity and um, the center of everything for the district is in Santa Monica. That's the, if you look at the relationships, they're much closer. Um, they have more MOUs within um, communities in Santa Monica. Um, the relationship with the cities are very different between the district and the city of Malibu and the district and the city of Santa Monica, even though they are part of both districts. Um, just the very field, they're two very distinct communities. Um, and also discontiguous districts like ours, where there's um, a district in between our, our contiguous district, were uh, stopped in 1980 or somewhere in the 80s. And at the time, I, there was a certain amount of le number left, but now we are the only one. And um, discontiguous districts were stopped for a reason, and we're just kind of the vestige of that. So I, I think we get to be divided a lot because it's there's one part always just having to explain to everyone else the relevancy, the issues, um, and, uh, and it's just a small piece and people aren't as close to it. So to me, that's a huge reason. And can you ask me the second part of your question? 
Yeah, sure. So as the, uh, you know, as everyone seeks to find a, a solution that's equitable for both Malibu and Santa Monica, what do you think that would look like where, where both sides can say this is a good outcome? Yeah, well, I think as we know, it was, um, again, super complex and big, and it all came down um, to a financial issue. Uh, I, everything else got resolved and was agreed upon except a financial issue, and it became down to a very specific point. And they have been working on it, I think, pretty steadily for the last two years. So I I love the question, and I think it's important to ask, but at this point, I feel like it's kind of a theoretical question when there's a real group of people really working on what that exact point is. Um, and, and I do feel like it has to do with sustainability. Where all of a sudden, um, people in Santa Monica no longer have um, resources and it's a foreseeable cliff. I think as much as that can be avoided is important, but also coming to it can separate. And um, I don't know, I have a lot more to say on that, but I'll give you the short, short answer for that. Got it, thanks. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. let's open up the floor, Patricia. Okay, uh, uh, Stacy, just, uh, just a great, set of responses as you probably know you're I assume you're pretty self-aware about how well you write and how well you think and it's really a pleasure um I I appreciate it in particular your idea of a perfect learning environment where a lot of people said good teachers or smaller class sizes and you you wrote high collaboration between students and teachers curiosity driven learning that involves real life scenarios and projects, healthy campus climate, high expectations, and safe place to learn and and fail and try again. And that's like the A plus answer. <laughs> and I really appreciate it. My question has to do with, and this has always been a problem in Malibu more so even than in town, is the attracting and retaining of, of high quality teachers. And you know, housing isn't getting any cheaper. And um, I was wondering if you have any, you know, the dorms at Pepperdine or something since you're affiliated. <laughs> well, as someone who lives on campus, I really appreciate that. I totally get that. I could not live in Malibu if I did not live on the Pepperdine campus. Wow. So I, I do understand that. I, I am not a renter, but I live in what is essentially subsidized housing. So I really do understand that. Um, so I would add to that, not just the teachers, but also staff. Um, I think um, one piece of that, frankly, um, it's administrative, but I think it's really important for more um, parts of the um, uh, hiring process, both where the locus of where the jobs get sent out, but also where they can come to get fingerprinted and get interviewed. I really feel like it justifies a center in Malibu for that. And with an administrator like the pathway director that we have in Isaac Burgess, that is possible. Um, our pool for Malibu just makes a lot more sense if it's not centered in Santa Monica, but centered in Malibu, because that would attract through the canyon in Thousand Oaks and Agora Hills and up the coast into Camarillo and Oxnard, and then of course down towards Santa Monica. But if if you drew circles around both communities, you would hit very different spots. And um, I think that would be important. I also think, I don't know how realistic this is, and I know I'm gonna learn a lot. Hopefully I'll get to learn a lot um, if if I'm elected, but um, I also, we, we had a, um, a collaboration with Boys and Girls Club um, some people in the district and um, some people in City Hall um, in Malibu on a Malibu Schools Leadership Council. And all of us have part-time jobs and all of us are having a lot of trouble have getting people to stay because people need benefits and people need and want full-time work. Um, but, but each entity on their own can't sustain that. But together, there's enough to put together full-time jobs for people, even in one city where there would be like some kind of... Um, I don't know if it'd be an MOU or how that would be, but where they could come together as an entity and hire full-time people or share those expenses. And we can't even look at that right now. So I, I do think there's some ways to be creative. I do think city of Malibu, just like city of Santa Monica has really stepped up to help. We have a lot fewer services. We're a lot less um, 
I don't know the word for it. We just have a lot less services in Malibu. I know they've really started working on more having the county come in more, especially with unhoused populations. I know we need to work on our um, uh, affordable housing here. I know the city council is on it, but it has taken a long time for us to get here and it's gonna take a long time for us to get to where we want to be. So I don't have a great answer for you, but those are some of my thoughts. They're really good. The only thing I would add to it is that it was triggered by what you said, and that's why we need to go for Medicare for all. And, and as an elected official, that's something that you can, you, you'll have a stronger voice on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Let's go to Melissa. Hi, Stacey. It's nice to meet you. Um, and thank you. I, I agree. And thank you for your thoughtful questionnaire. I, I have like a million questions about policy and things like that. And but I, I want to use my first and possibly only in the time we have question to ask you, frankly, a, a, a political one. Um, can you tell us more about the slate you're running with and why you've rose that you've choos, chosen to run on a slate and this slate in particular? Um, and given I'm asking this question, given that at least from your questionnaire answers, it's clear your experience level um, is different and your policy opinions seem to diverge in some important respects from others on your slate. So I wanted to hear more about that slate and your thinking on that. Nice to meet you and, and thank you for that question. Yeah, I, um, so, um, oh man, my head is just so full. You're gonna have to uh, give me a little time. Um, so I chose to do this the way I did it uh, for several reasons. One is I have never run before. I'm not an incumbent. And um, incumbents or people close to incumbents, in effect, run as a slate, whether it's called that or not. They have history together. Their names are known. Um, they've already been in office. There, there's just an incumbency effect. Um, and uh, having, um, I, I, I hadn't thought I would run because I would not want to compete with Craig, and I don't think our district is ready to have more than one person in Malibu on a board. I, I just, I mean, it would be good, but I, I think it would be impossible to run two people. So we're not going to cross cut each other in Malibu by running more than one candidate at a time. So at the time I found out um, that Craig was not going and then um, you know, decided I would be willing to put myself out there. I was really concerned about fundraising. I was really concerned about, I mean, I, I'm brand new to this. I don't know how to do any of it. And to know that there were other people who are also doing that. And um, we were all willing to agree um, on, on the fact that we were all very different. And we weren't, while we're running to in support of each other and collaborating, um, for some fundraising, we also are very distinct, and we actually think that's a really good message. Santa Monica is not a monolith. Our district is not a monolith. Malibu is not a man monolith. And to show that four people who are very different can still overlap in places where they agree and support each other, I think it seems, is really important. And we all need to be doing that. We see how polarized everything is getting. We may be uncomfortable with certain positions other take. We, but if if we can bring diverse people and diverse ideas, and diverse I know has a lot of different meanings, and I'm not talking about all of them right now, but at least political ideologies and backgrounds of where people come from and show we can agree on this, and we can agree then to have tension and to resolve things collaboratively instead of at cross purposes, I, I think that's really good. So I was willing to do that. I, I did think about running independently, um, but I, uh, seriously, in, like what, what could I do? And I just didn't think um, I was willing to do that to myself. And also I didn't wanna do that to Malibu. It's really important for Malibu to have a voice on the board, just like it is for other parts of Santa Monica to have voices on the board that are not always represented. Uh, but Malibu is a more clear case because there's two separate cities. Thanks for that. I hope I answered your question. Feel you free to follow up, okay. I'll give other people space. Thanks, let's go to Raina now. Great, thank you. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Um, my name is Raina. I was very impressed to read how highly um, competent you are to um, be on the school board. You just have a lot of, um, I think, relevant background experience in your professional work personally and also your education. Um, particularly, I was impressed to hear about your level one and two of restorative justice training. 
I'm a big fan of that. And I'm wondering how you would integrate that into um, the school system. Maybe you have thoughts about how kids could use this more. Um, maybe even us adult, the adults. <laughs> Um, needed. Um, yeah, thank you. If you could expand on that. Hi, Raina. Thank you. I, I really love restorative justice. I am not an expert, but I am a huge believer. Um, I um, have wanted to for years through Malibu Schools Leadership Council. Um, the reason I took it um, was to help bring in I really feel like all the PTA leaders should should have that training and then should go back with their principals and certain staff and teachers and then other parents, not just leadership, slowly take it. I would love to see, you know, at some point, everyone in the district have the training. I would love it to be foundational. Right now we do restorative practices. We don't really have a restorative justice system. It would take a long time and it would take a plan. We would have to invest in it. I, I love that Rob Howard is here and what he does, um, but it it's kind of, I don't, I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but the way he's functioned and what he's been willing and able to do is, is kind of un, unfair to him and unfair to the system because it is not meant to be a band-aid. It isn't meant to come in just when there's an emergency. It really should be a culture and how we all treat each other. It is, it is a, a voluntary participation for actual circles, but that way of life and that expectation in the system can be something that's expected. Um, and then the, how you participate in it can be voluntary. And so to, to have him in one campus and coming in just as kind of whack-a-mole when there's a problem, you know, he, he will be the first to tell you that is not how he likes to operate and not what he believes in. And it's also not good for our kids or our faculty and staff or our parents. And I think if we had a culture of that, we could see real differences. And I do think it's possible. Great, thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Dan. Thanks, John. Hi, Stacy. Um, I really appreciated your nuanced answer about districts for the SMM USD Board of Education. Um, but I'm curious, you know, are you willing to go on the record stating whether you support districting the Board of Education or not? Um, <laughs> I don't mean to give a slick answer, uh, but I think what I'd say, I I do support it if it is done well. I, I don't support it if it's um, falsely cut up. I, I know it's not the same thing, but I just look at how gerrymandered so much of our country is and both, you know, all political parties have gerrymandered in different ways and there really are equitable ways to district um, so that it's more accurately reflective of whole communities and can really be used representationally, not, not just to get somebody more power and or cut up power somewhere. So, and I and I do think it needs to be calibrated. Like you can't do it one time for all because landscapes shift and neighborhoods shift. So I really I am. I, I do think neither system is perfect. You know, in an at large, there are ways to do it well and there are ways to exploit it in districted. There's ways to exploit it and there's ways to do it well. Um, but given how at large has been going in the state of California and in you know, closer in here, um, it really has consolidated power in ways that haven't been healthy for the power holders or the non-power holders. So I, I do think done well districted could be a good way to go, but it would take a lot of community input. If I could ask a quick follow-up, John. Um, one, you know, one of the concerns with districting in the Santa Monica Malibu School District is there's no real way to kind of cut the map up without dividing up our communities of color into majority white districts. If we were to district and that was that would happen, kind of what are your thoughts around that? What um, how would you try to most equitably um, do districting if it were to happen? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that gets to the heart of what I was talking about, about gerrymandering. Like that is what has been happening either with communities of color or with ideolo ideologies that, that people want to suppress. And I, um, I, I again think it would really have to be looked at about how to do that fairly. And I, and I think, and I don't know, there's probably not a fair way. Fairness is sticky to hit, right? But, um, but I think what we're doing 
in effect can do that as well. Like it's happening already. So is, is there a way to address that? And I haven't looked at the maps. I'm not an expert. I, I do know um, this is not perfect either, but I do know there's software that helps do these really high calculations that takes into account those factors that communities think are really important and should be preserved. Um, but I, I'm talking out of my league here. I really don't know. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's go to Isabel. Oh, yeah. Hi, Stacy. Um, so my question is about the achievement gap. Uh, and, and you did give a very thoughtful answer on that. And you said some things that uh, uh, that have been implemented in the schools have not really resulted in closing the achievement gap. And you mentioned some things in general that you thought would. Can you be kind of specific or just elaborate on specific programs or policies or changes that, that you feel could actually reduce that gap? Um, I uh, was, was more well-versed on this a year ago when I was closer out of a, um, a seminar that I, that I took. And um, so I may misspeak, but I, I really do think culturally relevant classrooms, that's not just a, a word, you know, like it's a whole theory um, and, and student-centered learning, those, those things really can drill down in their specific practices. They are ways to engage students. They're ways for teachers and um, aides in the class and parents even to know how to relate to students because when they come in, they're whole people and they don't just get dropped into school and then they have their learning brain on, you know, they come um, with whatever was at home, um, good or bad, long-term or substantially. And so that uh, training our teachers to, to be aware of that and let them bring their home contexts in, I think is a really big piece of that. Um, I, all of these are kind of more indirect ways, um, but I still feel like they're very important. Anybody whose um, home language is different than English, whatever that may be, I feel like um, you know, we really need to focus on English lear language learning because they we that is our majority language. But so often it's viewed as they are behind or they're not going to make it. There's this fear around knowing another home language. And really, they're just that much closer to becoming bi or tri or multilingual. And that is a huge asset. And I think coming at it more from an asset based perspective is really important. And and when we approach it that way, that actually makes children feel more secure and more seen, and they're better able to learn, and that closes some of the achievement gap. I mean, it sounds indirect, and I, I can't cite you studies and stuff on it, but those are, just to get kind of nitty gritty and practical, those are two ways. Um, school climate has a lot to do with it. I don't know, there's a lot of different things. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now, we'll, last question goes to Melissa. We have time, John? We're good? Go I'll do it quick. Um, Stacy, I, um, well, based on my own personal opinion, I was happy to see in your questionnaire that you stated that you support the current SMC bond measure. Um, I will point out that is a place where you do differ from other people on your slate. And I just wanted um, to hear a little bit more about um, whether you could explain why and also um, whether you've supported um, other bond measures in past cycles um, that have really provided significant money for the district to do physical improvements and upgrades, you know, in the schools. Yeah, well, and um, so I have in the past um, done that. I'm, you know, hugely pro-education. I, I am uh, learning more and I feel very remiss. I really tried to be careful with my application and my answers. And I um, had read it, but I, I actually did not realize the disparity of how much money was being asked from Malibu taxpayers and how much money was actually coming into Malibu. And as I've looked more since I filled this application out and found out about it, it actually really concerns me. Um, I am pro SMC um, and I do want to support bonds. Um, and I, I may have, I don't know yet because I'm still researching, but I may have my first time where I have to say I misspoke and I may have to change my position. I am not there yet. I don't, I don't know, but the more I'm reading more in depth about it, I'm learning um, that um, somewhere around 125, about a third of the money that's being asked is going to come out of Malibu um, property taxes. And it, um, right now it sounds like uh, maybe 20 million might come back into Malibu. 
um, which is a huge difference. And that is not fully written out. And that's that's hard on the community. And so I think it would really, SMC would really have a lot to do to show how they can support in both communities. I know when I worked on the um, uh, Measure M for uh, the bonding, one of the reasons that um, Santa Monica and Malibu separated into two FSIDs was to have more equity of where the money is spent. And I'm even wondering if, if that, you know, that kind of care to look into both communities to make sure that all the communities are being served and people can see where, where their money is going. So I, I know that's not, that's not the answer I wanted to give you. And that wasn't the discussion I wanted to have, but I just, just in the last couple of days, I've read more and, and had to pause a little bit. Cool. Thank you so much, Stacey. We appreciate you coming by and uh, sharing your, your views with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me and thank you for your really thoughtful questions and for your affirmation. I was afraid I wasn't doing right. Your your questionnaire was really hard. <laughs> it was it's, and and by the end I was like, "Oh no, I don't think I'm doing you justice." So, thank you for your time. No, we were, it was very thoughtfully filled out on your part too, so we really appreciate that. All right. Take care. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you.